Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video is the Alienware Aurora R11. This is a small but mighty package. It's packing some serious components inside. And with such a small package, can it actually keep itself cool and quiet? Well, let's watch to find out. Let's roll. All right, so I've had this unit for a couple weeks now and really been able to put it through its paces like I normally do. In fact, I even loaned it out to my friend Keith so he could put it through its paces as well and uh, got some of his feedback to share with you today. Now, I did have to wait for a whole month to get my hands on it. There's certainly some good aspects about this, but there's a couple not so good things that I'll share a little bit later. The one reason that I actually brought this in was because it was one of the only ways to get my hands on a 3090. And so when this got announced that it was gonna come packaged with a 3090, about early October, I put my order in straight away. It did take a month to get here, and I'm hoping that that's not the case uh, now. And when I first opened it up, I was shocked by the size of this unit, but I didn't realize how small this unit is. Now I did go over a first impressions and unboxing of this unit. You wanna check it out on the, uh, the link above. Um, I'll briefly go over the specs on this unit. All right, so some of the components this thing is packing. Well, this features an i9-10900KF. That's 10 cores. 20 threads, boosting all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz. But that's not all. Alienware through Dell has actually overclocked this to 5.1 gigahertz for one overclock. And another one that's 5.3 gigahertz. Now the only option really is to get the liquid cooling to keep those critical components cool. I'll tell you a little bit how that thing actually performs in practice. Also has 64 gigs of memory. That's four sticks, 3200 megahertz. Unfortunately, only C20 in terms of memory timings. And then it also has a 1000 watt power supply. And of course also has the killer ethernet and wireless, two terabyte NVMe SSD, along with a two terabyte mechanical drive. So start of the show, it's a RTX 3090. Now, Alienware had to do some things special with this card. They had to actually shrink down and make a custom PCB for this card just to fit into this case. And in terms of aesthetics, of course it has its striking design on the front. It looks like a jet engine. I really like it. And of course, when you turn it on, you got this great blue logo on the front as well as Alienware on the side. Hmm, a little loud while idle, hey? It is not hooked up to anything right now, just literally plugged into the wall, but uh, maybe it doesn't like that. It does have a liquid cooling solution for the CPU to get those overclocks. However, it is only a single 140 millimeter fan on the top. It also has a fan on the front for intake, and that's it. It's actually fairly low in terms of overall fan count. So in terms of when I got this system, the first thing I noticed right out of the box is that the timings that I did select, so I got the 3200 megahertz of uh, memory, it was actually only operating at 2666. So it actually did not have the XMP settings enabled by default out of the box. So you actually had to go in and set those settings to get to or realize those performance gains. So that, in my opinion, is an oversight that should be set from the factory. So that way you don't have to tinker with the unit as soon as it comes out of the box. I thought that was a miss by Alienware on the QA. Now, the other component is the overclock. So at 5.3 gigahertz, one, that processor puts out a lot of heat. So you absolutely need liquid cooling. However, a single 140 millimeter fan is simply not enough. It would at least need a, a 280, in my opinion, to keep this thing cool. And so as a result, it's not stable. I've actually had this unit crash on me multiple times while testing and never being able to keep the 5.3 gigahertz sustained. It would boost up and uh, ultimately, more often than not, while under load, it would crash. Now taking that down to 5.1 gigahertz. This was a little bit better. However, in both the 5.3 and the 5.1, this unit got loud. I mean, real loud. 
like 65 decibels. So when you put it on full load, this thing is really struggling to keep that heat dissipating. And it's really pumping out the heat from the, the top exhaust here where that radiator is located. I did find that in short bursts, about maybe a minute to 90 seconds, it could keep that 5.1 gigahertz going. However, after that, it hits its peak temperature and it drops down, I mean, uh, by a lot. I saw this clock down to 3.6 gigahertz just to keep itself cool. So really just not a great uh, thermal solution overall. It just needed more up here and I think it would have been fine. Now for most games, you could run that 5.1 gigahertz and it would be fine. It would still be able to perform. I just found it wasn't quite stable. And so your mileage may vary, but just be aware of it. So now in terms of idle noise levels, I found that on average, this unit would be around that 40, 45 decibel mark. Um, not too bad, it, it could go a little bit lower, but as soon as you start to load it up, that was where really where it settled into. Now in the Alienware control panel, you do have a number of settings. So of course, this is where you can see the overclock settings. You can change your different profiles, make your own if you so choose, but you also have performance level. So either have balance or performance. I found that the performance noise levels were just simply too high. This was getting up to that 55, 60 decibels, just simply because it's just pushing out the, the air. Um, I just found that too noisy for day-to-day -day use. I settled in as balanced as really the sweet spot for this unit for keeping the noise levels as well as getting great performance out of the unit. All right, so let's get to some benchmarks and see what this thing is capable of. All right, so first up we have Cinebench R20. So this one came in at 4207 on balance, 4232 on performance, and then when it was overclocked at 5.1 gigahertz, came in at 6680. Now I could not run Cinebench on the 5.3 overclock, unfortunately. So that score is not there. And then for reference, I put in the 5950 that was able to crest over 10,000. Moving over to Cinebench R23. So this one a little bit different, but you can see with just out of the box coming at 10,138 with that 5.1 gigahertz at 16,666 and then the 5950 coming in at 25,000. All right, so for superposition, Alienware R11 came in at 11,765 for 1080p and 17,967 for 4K Optimize. And just for reference, I put in a Ryzen 3900 XT with the EVGA 3090 FTW3 Ultra. So you can see that the scores are pretty close here, just slightly, be uh, slightly below, but not by too much. So for 3D Mark, I had a, a mixture here. I got the Ryzen 5950X, a Ryzen 3900 XT, and of course the Alien Aurora R11. Now you can see across the scores, they are fairly similar, but I do wanna call out a couple. Uh, one, Time Spy Extreme, 8914 for the Alienware, and around that 9500 for both the Ryzen processors with the EVGA 3090. This is what I kind of saw across the board. It was within five to 6% of the scores as it relates to the 3D Mark scores. Heading over to Shadow the Tomb Raider. So highest settings here. This came in at 102 for the R11 with the 5.1 on balance profile and 104 with the performance profile. Now the performance profile, I'll talk a little bit about the sound levels, but overall you're only seeing about a 2% increase in frames. And then compared to the other Ryzen's processors at 119 and 121. Now, taking a look at some of the sound levels here, comparing balance to performance. Now you can see with the balance, it comes in at 46 decibels. Heading over to the performance profile, that boosts you all the way up to 56. Now it can go louder. In some games that have more CPU demanding loads, you will see that spike all the way up to 65. So I don't think you'll ever typically use that. But you can see overall CPU temps, GPU temps, um, not too bad. You get about uh, an eight degree gain when you're 
changing that from balance to performance on the CPU, and GPU was within a couple degrees there. Heading over to Far Cry 5, so Alienware posted 119 frames per second compared to 103 on the EVGA 3090. Heading over to Flight Simulator, Alienware came in at 43 frames per second compared to the 41 on the 3090 from EVGA. Heading over to Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, same story, Alienware R11 came in at 116 frames per second compared to the 93 frames on the EVGA 3090. Heading over to Horizon Zero Dawn. So this benchmark came in at 92 frames per second compared to the 79 frames I got on the EVGA. And then moving over to the Division 2. This came in at 96 frames per second and 93 for the EVGA 3090. Looking at Watch Dogs Legion, this is where it was a little bit different. The R11 came at 55 frames per second compared to 70 frames on the EVGA. And then looking at a couple other various titles, just solo, CSGO, I was seeing in and around that 280 frames per second, Apex Legends at 142, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 62 frames per second, and Call of Duty Warzone, 121 frames per second, and the Fog of War demo, just under 100 frames per second. Of course, all these titles, max settings across the board. Um, overall, very impressive here. So overall, this performed very, very well, well compared to that EVGA 3090. Now that 3090 itself, it did have some issues within the case I had it in. One, it was a vertical mount, and I found that the heat just couldn't get dissipated from there, so often the clocks were declocking from their spec just because it was hitting its thermal limit. So not probably a great representation, but uh, overall this was still able to put a lot of frames down per second, which uh, did its job just fine. So the real question comes down to, is it worth it? Well, right now, Dell Course has their Black Friday deals going on right now, so you can actually get the 3090 and 3080 for 25% off, which is stellar. So not only can you actually get your hands on a 3080 and a 3090, if you wanted a full system, you can actually get a pretty good discount under what MSRP is when you go out and get these cards. So if you're looking for a system, this might be the way to get access to those new cards. Now, about this unit itself, a couple of things that I just, I can't get my head around, and that's number one, the fact that this ships with an overclock, but it's just not stable enough. Now, I just think if you're going to say it is overclockable, it should be stable. And two, it shouldn't sound like a jet engine. It may look like a jet engine, but it shouldn't sound like it. And that really brings me to the only the 140 millimeter rad on the top. It really does need a 280, in my opinion, to really properly cool that CPU at those clock levels. So the other component of that is as a result of this 140, it's just really loud. Um, when it's not in the balance profile, when you get into that performance profile, this thing just sounds too loud. But that being said, when I had it in the balance profile, it actually performed really well. It was quiet, in my opinion, in terms of what I would use it for every day, and it was still able to put great frames per second down. So to me, that's a really good win. Now, would I recommend it? Well, for me, of course, I'd go with build the system. Build it from scratch, build it from the ground up, make it really your own. However, Alienware has got a great aesthetic on this. And so for those that want to get their hands on a 3080 or 3090, if you can get a good deal on this unit, especially with the Black Friday deals, I think this is a great buy. So really the choice is yours. You can have it now or maybe wait and have it later, but this is an option for you now. So I would seriously consider looking at it. I think this is a decent product outside of some of the flaws it has, if you can overlook them. Well, that wraps up the review on the Alienware Aurora R11. It was a pleasure to work with this unit. Let me know what you think about this unit in the comment section down below. Of course, as always, I'll put a link to this unit in the description, but if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to the channel. Love to hear from you. And until next time, bye for now.